Okay, we're back after 24 hours of my epoxy drying. It's a mess. It's going to need some clean cleanup, obviously. But that is very, very rigid. So you can see that the power of, of mixing materials and doing laminations and things, uh, because separately, the rock light by itself and the brass by itself were not nearly as strong as this. I mean, you could you could visibly bend them with a little force. I mean, this is like rock solid. The other thing that is uh, noteworthy is the difference in weight here. The original tailpiece is 5.8 ounces, and the new tailpiece, before being shaped finish sanded is 4.85 so an entire ounce lighter and that is because the brass I used is a little thinner and the rock light is much lighter than that ebony I also reduced the amount of brass used you can see here I, I basically removed this entire section of brass because I thought that that was uh, not really needed. So um, we got stronger and lighter by, by simply adjusting our material choice and the design of the, the brass substrate. Okay, so what I've done is I've established the string spacing based off of the original tailpiece. And I am using an on all to mark my string holes. I'm gonna try to drill this at a slight angle down because my brass is taking up the real estate on the bottom edge of the tailpiece. So I have to start my hole up top a little bit. But down back here I would like it to I would like the hole to exit a little bit closer to center. Okay, now my strip of brass is going to seep in there, and that's just going to kind of lock it, lock it together. Basically, the, the thinking behind my tailpiece design on my own instruments and when I'm doing something like this is I want to use sort of interlocking, an interlocking structure so that everything is very stable and the whole, the whole piece is sort of locking itself together. So we've we've taken our cap, we've embedded our brass substrate. Now we're going to embed a piece of brass along here and that's going to get locked into these side notches. And then once that's the, the brass is there, then we're doing uh, carbon fiber with a ebony and carbon fiber cap on on top. That's going to lock both sides of that together. I uh, sanded the brass and I cleaned it with a uh, denatured alcohol to make sure there's no contaminants here. And then I have these two pieces of rock light that get kind of wedged into the ends to lock it in. So my epoxy set on my brass insert and I've cleaned up this area here on the top drilled my holes through, um, haven't done anything with the bottom yet. What I'm going to do now is uh, I'm going to create a, uh, a cap 
that's going to fit over top of here, similar to the cap that was on the underside of the original tailpiece. But this one is actually going to be on top of the tailpiece. It's going to hide this brass and it's also going to act as a structural lock for this area, adding more strength to this area and helping the brass distribute the load to this entire uh, substrate. And then once I've got that fabricated, I'm going to flatten uh, the, the brass on the other side and we're going to epoxy our carbon fiber sheet to the underside and our cap with a carbon fiber laminate on the top side. So I've laminated the carbon fiber onto my cap and I'm just trying to sh do some shaping on it. I'll do most of the shaping once I've glued it on, but this back edge is a little trickier to get on, uh, shaped once it's uh, attached. I've also done my carbon fiber. That is a solid tailpiece right there. Now carbon fiber is messy. Um, in my old shop, I had like uh, an area that was where I did all my epoxy and carbon fiber work. I, I can't do that in this shop, it's too small. I'm gonna do some of this work without filming because I don't wanna get this carbon fiber dust on, the, on my camera. So basically all I'm gonna do is punch a hole through here and use my coping saw to cut this out and then file and sand it clean. Washed up my my brass. I beveled the edges. Um, I have the top pretty well shaped and sanded. I'm gonna do one last go round uh, with polishing the rock light up after I get it completely finished. Uh, the next step is gonna be to drill the mounting holes and the jack hole and get that all positioned in. Done my final shaping of the brass. I want to get my center um, line. Just make sure I'm I'm well established with that center. brass all polished up but there's one thing I still need to do here if you look at the um, if you look at the original tailpiece it, you know this guitar is 30 years old so that brass is patina it's aged next to the new brass it just doesn't look quite right so what I want to do is I want to age my brass a little bit so the first step is to clean the brass with acetone. This is gonna get rid of any buffing compound, grease, anything that might contaminate the, the patina. And I'm gonna use vinegar and a mixture of warm salt water. And all that's gonna do is a really light patina. It's gonna basically bring the color of the brass down closer to like a brown. Then I'm gonna use a mixture of water and cupric nitrate. And cupric nitrate is usually used as a hot patina, so the metal is heated up prior to application. In this case, I'm using it cold because I'm not trying to go too far and, and get too crazy. 
I'm just trying to make the metal look a little older. So in this case, I'm keeping it cold. I'm bunching up the paper towel to give it some texture. And then I'm taking a torch over it just to add some of that heat and get that reaction. And that's gonna give a nice aged patina look. It's not exactly the same, but it's gonna look a lot more natural than if it was just brand new polished brass. And then this will obviously continue to patina on its own. Um, eventually starting to look more like that. So you can see we, we stayed with the um, original design and um, it looks very much like uh, genuine ebony, the, that rock light material. The only major difference is we put this cap on here and we beefed this up just a little bit. It's a little thicker there. This repair we fabricated a new tailpiece I have the, I have put the strings on it and it's been sitting for two days now just to make sure that everything looks good um, you know I did the setup on it this morning I've been playing it a bunch and it is a great sounding guitar just like I said it would be dress on it um, nice nice setup and I'm really happy with the way the tailpiece turned out um, I did a few things that I didn't film I had a battery die on me and also I didn't film some of the stuff like finish sanding and everything just because it's a messy process and I don't like to expose my cameras to that stuff but basically the last few steps I did were uh, you know I, I finished sanded everything and then I took a uh, West Systems Epoxy, just a really small batch, and I just uh, rubbed it into the rock light, and that's something I like to do with the rock light because it is just slightly softer than ebony, and that kind of gives it a, a surface hardness. And then I polished it with uh, micro mesh to give it a nice kind of matte finish and uh, match it with the existing ebony, and it turned out really nice. I'm, I'm really happy with it. Uh, this is a great example of why repair work is so important for builders. And sometimes I feel like I'm a broken record with this because I say it a lot, but you know, I learned a lot doing this. Because I had to re-engineer this piece to solve some of the structural issues that the original tailpiece was having, but I wanted to do that in the confines of the the design. It really forced me to get creative about how I was going to construct this tailpiece and I ended up doing some things on this tailpiece that I, I really like and I think I might incorporate into my tailpieces on my instruments now. So it's just um, this was a, a, a really cool project to show you. Um, I tried to do the best in terms of documenting the whole process. I'm glad you guys followed along. I hope you learned some things and enjoyed this. Uh, if you like this kind of content, please subscribe and 
uh, please leave a comment, question, whatever in the, in the comment section because what you guys tell me helps me make better videos. And I'll see you guys and girls next time. Thank you.